So what is complex analysis? Now, in our daily and everyday life that the number system we encounter are either 10 apples or the temperature falling up to minus 10 degrees, the stock market rising up to 0.3% or the coordinate system where the uh, x is equals to minus 2 or even the very elusive pi which is 2, 22 by 7 going up to certain numbers. Now, these are actually denoted by the real number which is this big R. But that is always not the case. For if you recall uh, from our school days, the uh, equation for the quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c is something like this minus b plus minus b square my 4ac by 2a. Now, what happens if you try to plug in this value x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals to 0 and we plug in in this quadratic equation? So, if we try to solve this equation, we get something like this. Now, here all the trouble is being caused by square root of minus 5. Now, what is this value? So, the question rises that if there is a real value at all, such that a square equals to minus 5 or something like that. Now, physicist and mathematician does not stop, have not stopped up to that, but they think that something does not exist. Why don't we invent that thing which doesn't exist? So, that is where the complex numbers comes in. And you all know that we define the imaginary unit i as square root of minus 1. So, a number is generally said to imaginary if its square is negative, square root of minus 15 is imaginary because square root of minus 15 square equals to minus 15. So, a complex number is generally taking a format of z equals to a plus bi, where i is basically the imagined number. Now, if you're confused between complex number and imaginary number, I made a very short video many years back on my channel, Physics for Students, you can go and have a look. However, right now, now we know what complex numbers are. But the question is that instead of just plugging numbers and finding which is complex, which is imaginary, etc., why don't we go ahead and study functions where the input and output are complex numbers? So we are now going to understand that what is actually this z equals to x plus i y and plug into some kind of a function, something like this. So how does the function behaves? That is what is the target of complex analysis. So, I've just given a simple figure where you can see on the right hand side, the x moves towards the real axis and there is some axis which is called an imaginary axis. We really don't know or we don't perceive where it will go downwards or upwards, but it is just imaginary. So, if in case in contrast with the real calculus that we do, uh, for example, f of x equal to x square plus 1, we now what we do is that we study variables in a complex number. So, this is a complex number. Uh, with z being complex, something more richer happens. What uh, things uh, happens that we will uh, take care in the next part of the video. So, what we can say till now that in real calculus, when we do a differentiation, it just means the slope. Left to right, it moves upwards in one direction. But in case of a complex analysis, differentiation is not like this. Differentiability means the soap exists in every direction in the complex plane. Now, what it happens, how the visualizations look like, we will cover in the next part of the video. So, what we can understand is that if we take a real function f of x, and this is the very usual uh, you know, calculation of the differentiation, what we get is something like this. So, f prime of x0, I can write this uh, part of the illustration also like this. It's same, the, uh, you know, the, it's a kind of a repetition. So, fr from here, we can understand what the real number or the general derivative looked like. Now, if I use a complex function f of z, and we see that instead of uh, delta x or h moving towards 0, the derivative z of 0, we get something like this. Now, the question rises is that what happens when delta z here can approach 0? It can approach 0 from any direction in the complex plane. Not only the real axis x, but from any direction. So, that means we can say that the limit must be the same no matter in which direction delta z approaches from 0. Now, this is a kind of a nice diagram which I have made for you. Here you can see all the z's are basically converging at one point, which is the 0. So, if it is the green line, if it is the 
curly wavy line if it is the uh, gray line all these are basically coming down to zero this is basically a kind of a schematic diagram which shows which i was just explaining you now in order to uh, explain further about this direction where all the z's are coming up to a point zero what we will do is that we can take this kind of an equation so it is the limit where we are doing the derivative of the function which is complex different colors actually represents again if you go back to the animation here you can see all of them are approaching to zero and that is the beauty so here the different paths approach is zero and remember that uh, this one this in real calculus we only approach from the left to right in one dimension but here what happens in analysis there are infinitely many directions so all of them has actually gone to zero and each and every uh, direction whether it is the moving path or whether it is a converge or some somewhere the values are actually uh, merging and going to the point zero and that is something you know which is very important in this part of our video so uh, that is how it happened so what we can say is that in real calculus uh, as you can see that in case of a real calculus the value is from x to x uh, x tending towards x zero so that is how uh, you know things happen but in case of a complex function when we're doing differentiation from an infinity vary to directions in the complex range from z tending towards z0 or z0 from an infinitely variety of directions in the plane so that is why we say that the differentiation is different in terms of complex numbers so as you can see this actually gets changed to this that means the values are actually different so this trick condition makes differentiability something very special and the study that we will soon see now is nicely based on complex functions which gives rise to what complex analysis is all about so remember that in complex analysis we are studying analytic and functions that we have seen functions differentiable everywhere in region we also uh, you know study what are called contour integration residue theorem and the taylor lorentz series so this is just an example that what is complex analysis how does it differ from the real differentiation of the calculus how it emerges from a different part of the way now in order to know or give you a understanding that what is or how do we study complex analysis we should first know that why do we study complex analysis and the reasons are pretty simple it is not that what i have shown you infinitely in many different directions but they are many first of all it starts with the definition of the complex derivative which is this now you need to understand then when we get to the key fact that is that this limit may be the same matter in which direction delta z comes from the plane so complex plane is something like this so just to give you a quick recap i have drawn this so what does this actually imply so first of all you need to understand that most functions that are differentiable in the real sense that means you're using the general calculus are not differentiable in the complex sense that means uh, it, it it means that those are complex differentiable which are called analytic functions have some remarkable properties number one they are infinitely differentiable that is one we have seen that how the black dots from z are emerging to z zero second is that they can be represented by power series which is called teller series and they also follow powerful theorems like cautious integral theorem and residual theorem so why do we study complex analysis we study because in order to know these things in much more detail and most important is that those function which seems to be differentiable in the real world is not differentiable in the complex sense so here comes the question that why do we at all study complex analysis the first reason is that this stringent behavior which we have just seen actually leads to some elegant classy mathematical things which are called analytic functions and these analytic functions exhibit remarkable properties for example uh, the real reason we study complex analysis is that this strict differentiability condition makes the functions behave in a powerful way so i will now try to give you a very simple example mathematical and show you this power so if we take this function where for any complex number z equal to x plus i y we take a complex conjugate of this now if we think that f of z have two functions one is the real part and another is the imaginary part so along the real axis when y equals to zero we are moving on the right hand side we get something like this and it shows the value one now this is important because why this one denotes the direction and derivative exist and equals one 
and now i will show that how it differs from a complex sense so when we do the complex differentiation we get a value like this we have seen this now we will take the limit along the two direction first i will take in the derivative in the complex sense of so this actually gives to this which is on the real axis so if h is moving towards uh, this it would give one and if i take the imaginary axis the value will be if i calculate the limit step by step which i have skipped over there it will give you a value of minus one now this minus one actually leads to the conclusion the key conclusion is that since the limit depends on the direction <coughs> as you can see one is in one direction and minus one is in a, another direction the complex derivative does not exist and what do i mean by complex derivative does not exist actually it means that when we say that complex derivative does not exist we mean that the function does not have a well defined slope as we have seen in the real number because the limit depends on the direction we approach them even if we uh, if two directions give different slopes that is enough to say uh, that the derivative does not exist because in complex analysis it must be seen in all direction so you can see one coming plus one one coming minus one <laughs> that concludes that complex derivative does not exist so because of this restricting nature we get certain things fun first is that they are infinitely differentiable unlike real functions <coughs> we also find that they are expressive uh, expressible as power series taylor or lorentz series we get something very elegant which you all know which is called a cauchy's integral theorem cauchy's integral formula and also we get something which is called a residue theorem and remember this residue theorem is very much important in physics and engineering in evaluating integrals we also find <laughs> that this complex analysis do have a lot of application in terms of physics and engineering although there are many other implications and ideas and thoughts regarding why do we study complex analysis this is basically to give you a short idea about this now before i go ahead and explain you what are the books or the methods of studying complex analysis there are certain prerequisites that you need to have and the good news is that we don't have to have a much amount of prerequisites first you need to have a calculus with single and multi variable i would uh, strongly recommend for students should learn limit and continuity partial uh, derivatives uh, differentiation and double and integrals and line you should have got a basic concept of linear algebra complex numbers basic concepts <laughs> basic geometry and if you do have a series and sequences it is optional but not useful uh so in this case i would say this is a summary it is important to know calculus basic linear algebra and complex numbers and a little bit of euler formula also so having understood that what is complex analysis why do we need complex analysis why how complex analysis differentiation is different from real analysis and the prerequisites it is now time to move on the first book and as i would recommend that the very first book would be to get a very good understanding of complex numbers and for that i would recommend this book of uh, andresisu andresku and andrika complex numbers from a to z as you can see these are the customer reviews and this are the uh, photographs of professor dorin andrika and titu andresu now I, if i come to the book this book is uh, wonderful it starts with the complex numbers and algebraic form then takes on the geometric interpretation which makes the book more much more interesting because geometric interpretations makes things easier that that it goes into complex numbers and geometry more on complex numbers and geometry so the geometric part is covered very well then there are olympiad uh, caliber problems answers and hints to the problem and this is how it concludes so more than around 350 pages of the book quite well organized easy to understand so here i would say the review of the book is that it introduces the fundamental properties in a very nice way and it gives emphasis on the uh, on the geometrical part it explores the polar and exponential formats also as i told you discusses the geometric interpretations which are very important to learn and uh, it goes deep in geometric applications like transformations mappings on the complex plane 
So overall, I would say it also gives you an idea of Olympiad, caliber problems, etc. It has got a comprehensive coverage, geometric perspective is covered, problem solving is done. But I would say this is not an ideal book for a complex analysis because it doesn't go into the analysis part. So, but it is quite good because I feel that a very good understanding of complex numbers is required before you dive in complex analysis. Now, what is the best book that you should learn first, starting with complex analysis? I consider this to be absolutely a profound, detailed and an easy book to learn. A first course in complex analysis by Dennis Jill and Zill and Shannon. This is the cover of the book, which is one of my favorite. I take notes, I teach in the classes based on this book, to be honest. The uh, customer reviews are fascinating. As you can see, uh, it writes, Zill and Shannon is the most self-contained and learning from uh, this is most expedient. It is the only book to see that is structured uh, in a, on, on the very new commonplace. This is the book for self-study. This book is for reference of vast quantity numerical problems. All the reviews are quite great. So it proves the credibility of the book. The contents of the book, you can pause. I'm not going step by step. It would be too tedious for me. So you can see this contents around uh, all the chapters of complex analysis. But most importantly, it starts teaching you with the very basics of complex numbers, mapping, plane, analytic functions, and further. Uh, this book also is arranged in a nice way. This is how the cover looks like. Once you move on the chapters, you see the, what the chapter covers, introduction and the basic content. So before you go in the chapter, you get a complete understanding of this book. The diagrams are excellent. These parts are the, uh, you know, the gray parts are basically the applications, etc. Then the theorems are mentioned in blue way in a box. So you really understand what the theorems are all about. These are very nice, clear color diagrams which are shown and there are lot of exercises which makes even the learning more profound and better because in all the books of complex analysis relativity everywhere i have told that without exercise mathematics is not complete so overall what i can say the strengths is that it has got a very good amount of clarity it is very student friendly lot of if i i, I can remember the pages of the book on the left hand side it is showing the practical application student friendly comprehensive coverage all the topics are covered there are a lot of practical applications how these concepts relate to that and uh, in terms of uh, the i would say the limitations i do not find anything else but only that you need to have a very very good understanding of calculus so this would be my take of the book, A First Course in Complex Analysis by Dennis G. Zill and Shahanan is an absolutely stunning book to cover. So here is a quick uh, uh, summary of the book. It is an excellent course, very well defined, very easy to understand. Step by step, it takes into uh, you in everything. And if you are using as a textbook or supplementary or a learner, a beginner in studying complex analysis, I think this is one of the best book to learn about so that's it for today's video thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video if you have liked please do subscribe to my channel physics for students and click on the bell icon so that you get all the notification from physics for students you can follow me on my facebook handles where i am active with certain very interesting things other than pure mathematical equations you can write to my this email id and i will be soon back with more fun loving and interesting videos and an important podcast coming up in a few days from now watch out for physics for channel for more uh, this kind of videos where you are going to enjoy. See you soon in the next video. But till then, may the good Lord be with you.